All right, let's let's shift focus here and get into some news headlines, and we'll bring it back to the debt ceiling and so on. But let, let's do this one first. Major grocery chain struggles to survive a mid wave of thefts. This is a headline from Zero Hedge. A grocery retail chain, which operates primarily on the East Coast, says it's taking measures to stay in business amid rampant retail theft. So the company is called Giant Food. 160 locations across D.C., Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia has begun restricting entry and exit points, beefing up store security, some of which are armed. Okay, now, does any of this ring a bell, by the way, because you heard this prediction from my mouth here on this podcast in the previous months. I said this is exactly what's going to happen. Um, continuing, Displaying fewer higher dollar items on shelves and reducing the number of self-checkout items, company CEO Ira Kress told the Washington Post. Retail theft, says Kress, has increased, quote, tenfold in the last five years. Yeah, tenfold in five years. The last thing I want to do is close stores, he said, but I've got to be able to run them safely and profitably. He says that, The nature of shoplifting has changed such that more and more retailers are simply allowing it. We used to chase shoplifters, he says, and you'd get the product back and nobody would ever fight you. I didn't worry about somebody pulling a knife or a gun on me 40 years ago. But now, you know, it's different. Now we're seeing the highest level of organized retail crime and theft ever. And he said, it's escalating. Now it's Tide and Dove. Like, people are stealing soap, okay? Okay. And razor blades and Olay, which is crap soap, uh, or roasts or shrimp or crab legs. Can you imagine being a crab leg thief? Like, what do you do for a living? Steal crab legs. (laughs) Oh, so you're a fisherman? No, steal them out of the grocery store. Oh, you don't steal them from the ocean. No, (laughs) steal them from the grocery store. I'm just joking about the fisherman there. No, that's 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 honest hard work, by the way. Fishing in the ocean, that's honest hard work. But stealing crab legs out of grocery stores, that's just theft and looting. So, as I said before, what's going to happen is the grocery stores will be turned into kind of um, little, almost like high security prison centers. There will be only a certain number of people allowed in the store at any one time. And there'll be armed security guards at the stores. It, especially at the front entrance. And then, by the way, we're going to have rationing. On top of all that, you know, kind of a related topic, but you're going to have CBDCs, limits on what you can buy, especially meat, because, you know, meat, they'll say, is bad for the climate. And in order to fight the climate, they have to starve you to death. So you're not going to be able to buy the food you want. You're not even going to be able to get into the grocery store on the timeline you want because they won't let more people in in order to stop flash mob. Uh, thefts from occurring, right? But ultimately where this is going, and I talked about this, what, two days ago, I think? Ultimately, they're going to close the grocery stores in a lot of these Democrat-controlled cities. I mean, this was on my list, no, I guess it was Monday. Uh, the the nine trends of the, the death of the American city, the nine trends, one of those trends was the closing of retail outlets, which is already happening, and then leading to the closing of grocery stores, creating food deserts in these cities. So people will have nowhere to go to get food or to get basic supplies like toilet paper. So what's going to happen next? Well, they're just going to start stealing food from anywhere they can get it, you know, households, convenience stores or whatever. And ultimately, these cities will just be gutted. And that's how you're going to get refugees fleeing the cities and heading out into uh, the suburbs and rural areas. But isn't it interesting that just days after I made that uh, prediction that, you know, here it is reported by the Washington Post once again. Now, in addition to controlling your food, of course, they're going to try to control your money. And in order to do that, of course, the governments of the world, they hate crypto. And they really hate privacy coins or digital money that's private. And here's a story out of uh, CoinGape.com. Breaking Binance to disable privacy coins in France. So Binance, you know, one of the big exchanges. 
where you can buy and sell crypto is disabling Dash, XMR, which is Monero, ZEC, which is Zcash, and what else? Oh, those are the three that are mentioned. Monero, Zcash, and Dash. Okay. They're going to be disabled in France because the French government doesn't want privacy coins to be used. Why? Because they can't track what you're using them for. See, privacy coins protect your privacy. No one knows how much you have. No one knows how much you received. No, no one knows where you spent it or how much you spent or where you donated it to, where you sent it to. Nobody knows. And this is why I've been talking about privacy-oriented crypto, such as Epic Cash or Monero. And in order to buy and sell these privacy coins, since you won't be able to use Binance in France, uh, you're going to have to, I mean, there's a workaround. It's very simple. I'll tell you about it right now. And I think this is how all the privacy coins are going to work, because I think even in the U.S., they'll probably crack down on the privacy coins in the exchanges. But they can't stop them in individuals' wallets. They can't stop them. And frankly, they can't technically outlaw individuals from sending them or receiving them or using them. So what they're going to do is just try to ban them in the exchanges, which is what's happening here with Binance. So the answer to this is a non-European, non-US coin exchange where you could trade Bitcoin for other privacy coins. And I've mentioned this the other day, but one that I have learned about and that I like is called changenow.io. Change now. And the reason I like Change Now is because they're the first exchange that's going to support Epic Cash, which is on my scoring sheet, the highest rated privacy oriented uh, cryptocurrency. And yes, I, I own Epic Cash. I have some of those coins and I have Monero and I have Zcash. And I am moving, I've, I've said this like 10 times, I'm moving my savings out of the fiat currency banks into gold and silver and crypto. I'm doing that. I'm, I'm totally public about it. And you can buy Bitcoin through Binance or or Kraken, or Gemini, or Coinbase, or whatever. You know, you can buy Bitcoin, and then you just use changenow.io to swap Bitcoin for Monero, or swap Bitcoin for Epic, uh, coming up here in about maybe 10 days or so, or swap Bitcoin for Dash, or Zcash, or whatever else you want. That's how everybody's going to use this, because... The exchanges will always have to comply with local governments and local governments because they want to keep printing money into oblivion. They do not want anybody to have money that the government can't confiscate. And they especially don't want people to have money where they can't track what you're doing with it. Because, oh my God, if that were to happen, people might you know, support the trucker convoy or people might donate to Trump or something. You know, can't have that happen. Or people might have money that we just can't confiscate. You know, can't allow that. So every government in the world is going to try to crack down on crypto and try to crack down on privacy coins, but they won't be able to very much because, well, uh, cryptocurrency is peer-to-peer. -peer. It's decentralized. And if you have privacy coins, then they don't even know how much you have. They don't even know. And you can take your wallet with you just by memorizing the seed phrase words. Remember me talking about that for most wallets, including the Epic Cash wallet or the Monero wallet or other wallets, you get a seed phrase. It's like 20 to 24 words. It's like, you know, monkey and boomerang and giraffe and raccoon and whatever. And if you can remember these 24 words in the proper sequence, and there are ways to do that, by the way, then that's your wallet. Like, you have that in your head, you can go anywhere, you can install the software, type in those 24 words, and shazam, your full balance is available to you, and you have total control over it, which means that you can carry your assets with you in your mind. And no government can confiscate it from you because it's only, it exists in your mind. And, you know, until you load up the wallet, and now it exists on the blockchain. And you can trade it for Bitcoin, and you can use Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you can push Bitcoin back into fiat currency if you want, or you can use it to buy gold or silver or goods or whatever. Oh, and of course, by the way, healthrangerstore.com soon will accept uh, Epic Cash and Monero. Uh, 
especially those two, as privacy coins for purchases. Yeah, that's coming up real soon. Probably within, I'm guessing, within two weeks, maybe three. Uh, certainly within the month of June, you'll be able to buy with um, privacy cryptocurrencies at healthrangerstore.com, which is great because then no government can track what you're buying or that you've even made a purchase. You know, because they want to outlaw vitamin C or limit your food purchases as part of the rationing program to starve you out. So isn't it good to have privacy with your money? Now, this is especially critical because getting back to the original story here, the debt ceiling. So the U.S. debt ceiling being raised, this means that they've, they've thrown in the towel, essentially. They've given up on ever balancing the budget. That's never going to happen again. Instead, the United States of America is going to implode under a debt collapse. And if you think about it, every dollar that comes into existence is an instrument of debt. From the moment the Treasury has it, it's already owed to the Federal Reserve, which is a globalist private banking cartel not even owned by the government or the people. It's a, it's a private banking cartel. So every dollar that comes into existence is an instrument of debt. Whereas with cryptocurrency, every coin that comes into existence, typically through mining, is not an instrument of debt, but rather an instrument of value. It's an instrument of value. So think about this. In the long run, which monetary system is actually going to do better? Would it be a monetary system based on nothing but debt? Where you can never pay off the debts? And they just keep printing money into oblivion. Another trillion here, another trillion there. You know, until the, the units become worthless. Is that going to be sustainable? Or would you rather have a monetary system based on units of value that have a limited supply, mathematically, algorithmically limited, where no government can come along and just say, ah, let's just throw another trillion into there. And no government can come along and just say, uh, give it to us. We're just going to take it. See, cryptocurrency is actually superior money compared to fiat currency. There's no comparison. Fiat will die. Cryptocurrency being decentralized, and especially, again, the privacy-oriented coins, is holographic. It's everywhere but nowhere. It can be reseeded from anywhere, and it you can carry it in your mind. I mean, these are extraordinary properties that have never existed in the history of humanity in terms of money. And governments are panicked trying to figure out how to deal with this stuff, which is why France tries to ban privacy coins in the exchanges. Well, good luck. Not going to work. France, another tyrannical authoritarian regime, <laughs> and, and the UK, of course, uh, not going to work, France, because people will just go to changenow.io, which is based out of who knows where, some other jurisdiction, uh, you know, not even in Europe. And they're just going to swap Bitcoin for the privacy coins. And then they're going to hold those privately in their private wallets. And, and then they have money that the French government can't even find. Can't even see it. Doesn't even know it exists. I tell you this, when, when the dollar collapses, you don't want to be left holding the dollar bag you don't want to be looking at your bank account. How many dollars do I have? And, you know, the person next to you is like, what's the point? They're all worthless anyway. Look, my dollars are still there. Yeah, but they're worthless. Who cares? You want to have something that still has value, which is why I've mentioned year after year after year, you know, gold and silver and land. <laughs> and, by the way, if you need money that you can take with you without asking for permission, money that you can actually put in your mind and then restore it wherever you get to your destination, money that the government can't find, can't confiscate, can't track, well, that's private digital money. Privacy-oriented cryptocurrency. That's what that is. And again, this is why I'm an advocate of Epic Cash and also, to some extent, Monero, although I think Epic is, well, there's no question Epic is technically superior because of the Mimblewimble blockchain, but I'll talk about that another day give you more details on that, but they're, they're both very useful coins, by the way. Very useful. Much better than Zcash, because Zcash doesn't operate in privacy mode most of the time. So most Zcash is just public blockchain, kind of like Bitcoin. 
but the federal government is so corrupt and run by such imbeciles, they think, they literally think they could just print trillions forever and that nothing bad will happen and that there will always be a buyer for the new debt. Oh, we'll just sell trillions this week and next week and over here and over there. Guess what? There aren't going to be global buyers much longer. Who's going to want to buy a currency that's going to zero? I mean, seriously, who's going to buy the treasuries? Are the Saudis going to buy the treasuries? No. Saudis are doing deals with China. Is China going to buy the treasuries? No. Why would they? Why would they support their strategic enemy? Is Japan going to buy the treasuries? Japan has its own yen problems and Japanese central bank problems. Who's going to buy the treasuries? Who's going to buy the dollar debt? Will it be the UK? Not if they're nuked by Russia. There won't even be a London. Who's going to buy the treasuries? Nobody. At some point, nobody's going to buy the treasuries. So what then? You're going to have a total cascading debt collapse that will bring down the entire Western financial system. And when that day comes, in my opinion, this is my assessment, of course, you want to be holding gold and silver and crypto. You don't want to be holding dollars because they'll be gone. Useless, valueless. <laughs> even, even if you're holding coins, it's going to be worthless. We'll call them McCarthy coins. How much is those McCarthy coins worth? Uh, zero. Just like McCarthy himself. Valueless. Has no values. Useless. Yeah, it's not even worth a penny. Do you realize that if food, if the whole food supply chain were priced in cryptocurrency, there wouldn't be any inflation in food. Did you know that? The only reason food is getting more expensive is because it's priced in dollars, and the dollars are becoming worthless. But what if we priced all food in, let's just say, Bitcoin? This is the most common cryptocurrency. Then, you know, a loaf of bread is, you know, 0.000 whatever, one Bitcoins. It would be a lot more stable in Bitcoin than it would be in dollars. And And even hearing myself say this, I'm a little bit shocked because I wouldn't have said this, you know, three years ago or, or certainly five years ago. I would not have said that. I would have said that Bitcoin is way more volatile than dollars. That's not true anymore, folks. And we have to adjust with the reality of the times. The dollar is volatile. Cryptocurrency actually is a better store of value than fiat currencies at this point, And I think forevermore. And I think that if we can create supply chains that are priced in crypto, they will be more stable and less volatile overall. Although there, you know, I mean, there'll be some volatility always, you know, bad weather can, you know, crush crops and cause price spikes and so on. But I mean, compared to the dollar, the volatility will be a lot less. The dollar, you can count on it losing value every day. There is a 100% chance that your dollars are going to be worthless. That's, that's a certainty, 100%. In fact, there is a 100% chance that every dollar you hold right now will be worth less next month than it was this month or right now. That is a certainty. It's not even price risk like, oh, it might go up and it might go down. No, it's going down. You can count on it. You can bank on it, Betty. It's going down. There's no scenario in which dollars become more valuable as long as they keep printing trillions. You know, in order for dollars to become more valuable, you'd have to have deflation, which would normally involve contracting the money supply. And that's not happening. It's not going to happen. They're going to expand it. They're going to print into oblivion, hyperinflation, blowout. It's done. That's where this is headed. I mean, wouldn't it be great if you could just buy reliable food credits right now that you know are good for a certain amount of food, but it was also a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer system so that no one could take it from you and had full privacy. Now, you know, I interviewed the folks from that farm in uh, Oregon, and they sell the moolah coin, which is really kind of like, you know, in-store credit, basically. And one moolah coin is equal to, uh, I think it was half a gallon of milk from their, you know, fresh milk farm. They have, they serve thousands of families a uh, great couple that I interviewed there about that. So they have the Moolah coin. I like the way they think because you buy the Moolah coin and it's always equal to half a gallon of milk. What if we could buy food credits right now 
in some kind of cryptocurrency, like one credit was always worth a loaf of bread or something, right? And you could stock up on the crypto now in order to know that you would be able to purchase X number of loaves of bread in the future and that that would never be taken away from you. Or, you know, X number of pounds of ground beef or whatever it is that you want to buy, X number of bags of potato chips. Whereas right now, if you earn dollars and you pay taxes on dollars and you put dollars in the bank, you have no idea what that's going to buy down the road. You put away $100 right now and you think, oh, that's going to buy groceries for one week. You know, next year, it's groceries for two days. <laughs> you see what I mean? And this is already happening. You've already seen this. Dollars can't be counted on. So you don't even know how many you're going to need in the future which makes it impossible to engage in rational financial planning because you're planning in a currency that's a ripoff where they keep printing trillions, which is confiscating value from you. They're stealing from you every single day. This is why I'm exiting the whole damn system, folks. I'm getting out of that system and I'm putting it into things that hold value, gold and silver and crypto. And I don't care about gold's volatility against the dollar. The dollar is going to zero. Gold's going to be worth millions of dollars, you know, per ounce at one point when the dollar goes close to zero. You know, I took a tour of the Central Bank of Ecuador uh, in Quito. And that was a fascinating tour. I told you about this before, where they have this one display on the wall. It's a giant aquarium filled with coins, coins that have since been abandoned uh, in the hyperinflation of Ecuador before Ecuador switched over to the U.S. dollar, which will also end catastrophically, by the way. But there's, there's a question there on the wall. It's like, can you guess, you know, what's the modern day value of all this money in this giant aquarium filled with coins, right? And I forgot the exact answer, but it's something like it's worth a quarter, you know? It's worth a dollar. That's it. It's, it's valueless, basically. All the coins, you know, probably thousands of pounds of coins is worth nothing. That's where the dollar is going. So if you have a bunch of dollars, you think you're going to be able to trade it for food down the road, you're not. It's, it's going to be worthless. 